Hi everyone, my name is Pavan. I'm one of the co-founders of Table Grabber. Today we are happy to announce that we're launching a B2B platform for restaurants called ResGuru. ResGuru is a dynamic pricing platform for restaurants. It allows the restaurants to automatically change their prices based on demand and supply. Now before I get into too much details about ResGuru, let's look at some of the current eating out scenarios that we all go through on a day-to-day -day life. Well, this is what we all experience, you know, when we go out to eat at a popular restaurant at a busy time, long lines, long waiting periods. You go back to the same restaurant at a, you know, in a different time, and most probably you might find it empty. Ironically enough, you end up paying the exact same price for your meal at both those occasions. Well, this doesn't make economic sense, at least not for a perishable inventory. Well, restaurants have perishable inventory. If a restaurant is not able to sell a table at seven o'clock in the evening, it's a lost opportunity for the restaurants. Restaurants have very high fixed costs. The rents are already paid for, the utilities are already running, the staff is already standing, the food cost is about 30 to 35%, so everything else is just incremental profit if they're able to use that table. Unfortunately, industry estimates say that about 40% of the restaurant inventory is underutilized due to lack of revenue or yield management. Now this alone within the US accounts for about $260 billion in opportunity loss. Well, obviously we can never have 100% utilization, but this is a huge gap to be bridged. Add to that, every day across the US, 130 million pounds of food is wasted on a daily basis. That's a lot of food going down to the hog farms, wasted because restaurants A, are not able to forecast properly, B, they are not able to price their product optimally to sell it at the right point. Well, that is one of the primary reasons restaurants have one of the highest failure rate in the small and medium business category in the US. About 30% of the restaurants would fail during the first year of their operation. And unfortunately, this number goes up to 60% by the third year. These statistics are something I'm too familiar with. Having worked in the hospitality industry for 15 years, I've seen these cycles way too many times. I'm also a graduate from Cornell Hotel School, and I've done my master's in revenue and yield management. So this is some area that we understand very closely. As a result, myself and my team, we have created ResGuru, which is a global distribution system for restaurants, which allows them to change their prices automatically based on demand and supply. Now let's get into the demo part. Can we switch to the demo, please? Now this, for the sake of this example, let's assume I'm the owner of the Taj restaurant. And what I see out here is a consolidated snapshot of my reservation diary, which is seamlessly integrated with my point of sale system. The first thing I see is all my reservations, all my food orders are consolidated from across all the online and offline channels in the, uh, in the, uh, for my restaurant. So it gives me a consolidated view, a snapshot of what's happening in my restaurant. Now I as a restaurant owner want to know how is my restaurant performing financially? So let's move to the analytics part of this. Now what I see out here is the performance in the month of June. Everything on the face value looks pretty good. You know, my sales are all right. You know, I'm doing better than last year, same period. But look on the right side, one of the key metrics out here is utilization. My restaurant's utilization is only about 56%. I'm leaving about 40% on the table. That's a lost opportunity for me as a restaurant. And the second uh, column you see out there is ref bash, which is one of the key metrics to measure the restaurant's performance. It tells you revenue per available seat hour. So it's actually calculating the opportunity cost into that revenue uh, uh, bit out there. Now, I, as a restaurant owner, I'm pretty worried. You know, I'm leaving a lot of, table of, uh, lot of uh, scope in, the, you know, in my business, so I don't want only 56% utilization. I want to increase it. So let's see how ResGuru's dynamic pricing platform can help me. Let's go to dynamic pricing now. Now, what we see out here is we can actually do menu engineering. We can do, set up a strategy to start off with. And in this case, just for the convenience of our presentation, let's go to strategy one, which we have already selected. Basically what I can do out here is I can select different overall goals. Do I want to increase my overall sales or do I want to increase my ref bash, which is revenue per available seat hour? Let's say we want to increase our ref bash. We can also set different rules for the restaurant reservation. 
how much overbooking do I want to do? Do I want to be uh, you know, utilized at 80%? Do I want 10% overbooking? What are my blackout dates and my blackout slots? How much do I want to keep for my waiting, uh, you know, for my walking guests? Similarly, for food ordering, which is a major source of revenue for restaurants these days, I can input what is my commissions to all my channels of reservation. Accordingly, ResGuru will price and give me a pricing recommendation. Let's go to the simulation, please. So what ResGuru is doing in the background is it's taking into account 21 different variables, macro and micro data points, and along with historical trends, to forecast the demand for me and give me a pricing strategy for each time slot during the day. And here, as we can see, my forecast is 68% utilization and 8.72 uh, ref bash. Now let's actually go, luckily this is a real case scenario, Taj is an actual restaurant who's using our pilot project. Now let's see how they actually performed in the month of July. As we can see, we were able to increase the ref bash and utilization for Taj. We were able to increase the utilization by 16%, to 64% to overall utilization. We didn't hit the forecast, but we came pretty close. Similarly, we were able to increase the ref bash to 8.1, which is a huge metric for the restaurant, which translated into 30% increase in their gross profits. Can we move to the presentation, please? Uh, switch. So uh, we have been live uh, you know, with Table Grabber. We have digitized about 1,200 restaurants globally. And to, uh, with our ResGuru platform, we have been running a pilot with five restaurants, and we have seen considerable good results with all of these restaurants. Uh, we are launching our uh, private beta today, so we welcome all of you who are restaurant owners to sign up with us. And if you go to a re restaurant regularly, please tell them to sign up with us, because this will not only help them optimize their revenue, but also get you better deals in your restaurants. Thank you. All right. What is, what is res, ResPosh? Ref bash is Ref revenue. Yeah, it's revenue. It's like, you know, normally you have an average check which says, uh, let's say you're a restaurant with 100 seats. You just got one customer. The normal metric is, hey, if you spend $25, you have an average check of $25. But ref bash takes into account how many hours, how many seats were there. So what's your total potential? So it divides it by that, and that's how you get ref bash. Great. As a startup and anybody else, you should never be afraid of big incumbents. That's why you want to start with great businesses and go after them and destroy big incumbents and competitors in the space. I'd be remiss in asking, there is a really big incumbent in the space, recently acquired by a $50 billion company. It yes, has a lot of yes. data and a lot of, um, um, you know, obviously penetration into the market. Remiss not to ask how you work with them. Do you work with them? Do you compete with them? So uh, we don't compete with them. Uh, Open Table is uh, just a reservation engine, and it's console-based. It costs restaurants about $10,000 to get started on. Average monthly fees is about $700 per restaurant. And just in the US, Open Table has only 18,000 restaurants. The US has 250,000 full-service restaurants who need a product with, to digitize them and who need a dynamic pricing tool, which helps them optimize their overall revenue. So we don't see them as a competition. In fact, we will give our open APIs to them so that their existing partners, restaurants, can you know, utilize our uh, dynamic pricing tool. And what does is, what is your pricing look like for a restaurant? What is your pricing? pricing. What would it look oh, like? Our pricing model yeah. is actually based on the number of covers. So there are different metrics. I mean, number of covers, average check, all those metrics play into place. So on an average, you can start out at about $250 and go up to you know, $600, $800, depending on how much value we are creating for the restaurant. I can understand. Um, certainly discounting or thinking about adjusting prices downward. From an end user or you know, customer perspective, the idea that if I show up and I'm waiting in line and I'm paying more money because I'm coming at like a, a big time. time, seems like it could alienate me. Right, you're very right. It is very against the grain of what we are used to. We are very used to doing that in an airline or a hotel where you know, a person sitting right next to us has paid just you know, $100 versus we have paid $500. We are very used to that. But a restaurant, we don't want to do, uh, deal with that. And we, we don't encourage restaurants to increase their prices. What we allow restaurants to do is, in case it's a peak hour, you're going to Nobu on a Friday night, we tell Nobu, hey, you know what? You can save the last two tables. You don't have to increase your price but you can set a minimum guarantee on those tables. So you just guarantee that I'm gonna spend $200 per person 
so that the average Joe doesn't come there and spend only fifty dollars. So you know that's a win-win situation. The consumer does not feel like he's been fleeced out of you know his money. Is the value proposition more getting people to come during off-peak times or increasing pricing at peak times? Uh, it's more uh, to displace the demand from the peak to the valleys and, and give them an overall maximum optimization. And is, I mean, do you really see that price elasticity of demand where you can actually shift consumer behavior from dining at 12 to dining at 3? Uh, yes, I think uh, there's a huge demand. Like, like I just gave you an example, how much food is wasted? I mean, so many of us order food daily, right? So what if I told you at 10 o'clock if you order food from my restaurant, you can get it at 30% discount. The restaurant is making 70% of the money on that, which would have just gone down the drain because he had to just throw away that food, which was already prepared. So it's a huge, uh, I mean, there is uh, a, a se segment of the market who yeah. is price, you know, willing to shift their demand. Like I said, you know, I would love to go to Nobu, but not on Friday. You know, if you tell me I can go on a Monday at 50% discount, hell yeah, I'll go there on Monday. And then uh, a key part of the success of the platform ultimately is making or enabling consumers, or making consumers aware that there's a pricing difference? Do you, are you responsible or are you helpful when it comes to that? Or do you kind of leave it to the restaurant manager? No, we, 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 we are a recommendation engine. So we recommend them and like, you know, we showed quickly the rules. The restaurant can set certain benchmark rules that, hey, I never wanted to, you know, go down this level and I never wanted to, you know. No, sorry, so like, so uh, Indian restaurant, Taj restaurant decides that they're going to offer 70% off their food Tuesdays at 3 p.m., whatever it is. You're right. Uh, how do you make large numbers of consumers aware of that so, so we that you drive traffic? Excellent forward? question. So that's why we're not into B2C space. We have open APIs. So anybody, whoever is the restaurant's partner, if they're partnering with Grubhub, Seamless, uh, OpenTable, the menus are updated, the prices are updated instantly in one go. So that's, I mean, that's open API, so that's why we partner with everybody in the space out there. But are you doing any contextual communication with the customer? So, you know, I, I'm usually not deal seeking when I'm looking for food. I'm, I'm hungry right now. Right. And that either means that it's a time of the day or it means that um, I'm, I'm in a location where I'm looking for food. Are you guys relying entirely on third party apps or are you developing your own like mobile app that might be able to leverage that? So in markets like, uh, you know, we're live in India and Brazil. In the, both these markets, there was no B2C platform, so we created our own platform called Table Grabber. But in a market like US, which is already saturated in B2C space, we wanted to pick our battle and we said, hey, let's go with B2B and we'll open our API so that, you know, all the existing players are already there doing their job. We don't want to compete with them in what they do best. So we just want to sort of support them in that. Focus on one. All right, so we're out of time. Great job, you guys. That was Thank Table Grabber. Thank you. Well done.